would like to speak about commitment and the virtue of prudence. We're going we're gonna to work through some big, com- some big concepts pretty quickly. Uh, if you want to get back and hear it again, we record all the sermons through on our website. Okay? So get ready. Here we go. Jesus is, is setting forth for us a real challenge. That is, that our yes is yes and that our no is no. That we would be people of integrity and of our word. It says, don't, don't make your, your pledge upon God or Jerusalem. Make it yourself. You be the standard by which the decision is made. Right? By swearing upon something else is that you're using something else's virtue to back up your, your decision. No, no, don't do that. You do it. You be responsible. Wow. Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no be no, which in many ways is the opposite of our culture, myself included many times. Commitment is something that's very difficult for us. You and I live in a time where our yes is difficult to be yes. There was a time not too long ago in our history, a few generations back, where million-dollar deals were done on a handshake and someone's word. Not anymore. We need prudence to be able to counter this. Prudence is the first of the cardinal virtues. There are four of them. Cardinal comes from the word which means hinge, like on a door. It's, it's the, they're, they're the virtues by which the good life hinges on. To be a good, virtuous person, we need these. They're, they're pivotal. Prudence is the first of them. There's prudence, and there's fortitude, and there's temperance, and there's justice. I'm talking about prudence. Prudence is defined as this. Correct knowledge of things that ought to be done and of things that ought to be avoided. Correct knowledge of of the things that ought to be done and of the things that ought to be avoided. Prudence helps us make good decisions, right? It's the decision virtue that I can make a choice and act on something and I've made a prudent decision should I have bought those shoes or not? Right? Should, have, should I have said the drinks are on me or not? Right? Was that a prudent decision? Did I weigh the evidence? Did I weigh it correctly? Prudence is about, do, did I seek counsel? Do I understand what's a part of this decision, whether big or small? Do I have right judgment as I come forth for this decision, and then can I commit to it? Prudence. It's a good thing, isn't it? There are a couple of ways in which we go against prudence. St. Thomas Aquinas says that the two main ways we act against prudence are one is by being indecisive. Right? Being indecisive, failing to execute. It's a fear of commitment. Right? And the second way is inconstancy, is by making commitment and then changing our mind. First, indecisive. And I am good at this one, right? So uh, I, can't, I can't hold myself up as an example. Those are things that I'm working on. Indecisive. How are we indecisive now? Let me give you a few examples. Hey, uh, let's go out and have some dinner. Okay. Well, where do you want to go? Well, I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? You pick. No, no. You pick. No, you pick. I don't care. We'll pick. Just pick. <laughs> right? Want to go to a movie? Yeah, what movie do you want to go to? I don't know. What movie do you want to go to? No, I don't. And deep inside, you really want to go somewhere. But we won't make a decision because we are so afraid that our decision might not be what somebody else wants. And so we're very afraid to say yes or to say no because we're anxious and worried about all of these things outside of ourselves. And it's very real. I do it. Sadly, I'm working on it. Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. It's okay to make a decision, right? It's okay. Inconstancy, right? Inconstancy is we make a decision and we pull out, and we're really good at this. Here's an example. Hey, we're going we're gonna to have a big event to rake yards on Saturday, and we get people to sign up, and then Saturday morning, half the people don't show up. Failing to hold to our commitments, pulling out at the last minute. Why do we do that? 
Why do we do that? I think oftentimes it's because, one, we say something else came up. I've used that before, right? Whenever, so for me, from now on, when you hear the word, something else came up, that's code word. That's code for, I really wanted to do something else. Thank you very much. Prudence is about saying, I made a commitment, and I'm going to keep it even if something better comes up. Because something better will always come up. Jesus will say, if you can be faithful in the small things, then you will be faithful in big things. Much more will be given to you. This is critical for us as Christians. God's word is powerful for us. So if I can hold a small commitment, and I'm faithful in small commitments, then I can be trusted for the big commitment when I stand up here and I say, I do, for the rest of my life. But you and I live in a culture where we're afraid to make commitments, and it's affecting our culture in general. More and more and more and more people are choosing not to get married because they're afraid to make the commitment. I see this all the time with, with vocational discernment. When I come to, to gentlemen about being humming a priest, they're just like, no way. I can't even decide what I want on the menu. How can I decide what I want to do for the rest of my life? Now I'm being a little exaggerating here, but not really. We need to begin, as, take, take Jesus at his word, and begin practicing this virtue, growing in this virtue, making decisions, following through with commitments because something better will always come up. But am I a person of my word or not? That says a lot. St. Thomas Aquinas says lack of following through in our commitments is a lack of character. Right? Lack of character. So when we make a commitment, we hold to it, I might have to do some self-sacrifice. I might have to dig deep. I might have to do a little suffering. Character. Believe me, every one of you want to marry someone of high character. I promise you, every one of you wants to marry somebody of extremely high character. You want a priest of extremely high character, don't we? I'm not saying I'm there, but we should be working towards that. St. Thomas Aquinas says that there's a couple of ways in which we, in which we struggle in this area of commitment and prudence. He says that we lack decisiveness because we're anxious and worried about the things of this world. I can get very caught up and not land on a decision because I keep, I'm too worried about everything. Well, what if this changes? And what about this? And what about this? And what about that? What about, and so then I never make a decision. Or I'm overly anxious about the future. I'm worried too much about future things. This comes up in vocational discernment a lot. Well, what if I get lonely? What if this? What if that? What if this? Those are real things. But here's what Jesus says to that. There's nothing wrong with thinking something through, but worrying, this anxiety, and worrying about things in the future that paralyzes my ability to make a decision. Here's the litmus test. Matthew 6, 25, Jesus says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat, what you drink, what will you wear. Look at the birds of the air, he says. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you add a single hour to your life by worrying? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Worrying about the future excessively distracts us from our ability to be concerned about the things now. St. Jose Maria Escriva, he says this, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, if you worry about the future, God cannot give you the grace for that now. God gives you the grace to deal with the things in the moment. In other words, I'm worried about a future event, but by worrying about it, I'm trying to fix it now, so to speak. 
well, I don't have the grace to deal with a future event. God is always in the present tense. God gives us the grace to deal with things in the now. So in the future, God will give you the grace to deal with that. Don't worry about it. Stop worrying. Let your yes be yes. And we might make some commitments that we think, how am I going to do this? Because I'm a person of character and integrity. I've weighed it out. I've got some good counsel. And at a certain point, I commit. And I'm just going to do it. My yes means yes. My no means no. A couple of real practical things of how you and I can learn and regain some of this virtue. Parents, you can do this for your children, grandparents, for your grandchildren. Force yourself to make decisions on small things where it's not a big deal. So from next time someone says, where are we going for dinner? Pick someone to choose. Okay, so students in the center, I'll be doing this. Hey, let's go out for dinner. Where do we want to go? Um, Bob, you choose. You have 15 seconds. <laughs> go. Well, where do you guys want to go? No, you get to choose. We'll go wherever you want. It's okay. Choose. Well, I don't know. Do you guys want this? No, Bob, you choose. I don't know. But what do you think? Bob, choose. You know, but I don't know. Bob, I'm not asking you to push the button to launch the nuclear missiles. <laughs> Just pick a restaurant. I won't be mean like that. I have it with your children. We're going to have a movie night. You got all the DVDs. Sarah, you pick the movie tonight. You didn't pick the movie? It's like, oh my gosh, you pick. And then when Sarah picks the movie, watch it. Don't say, oh, I wish you wouldn't have picked that one, because then you ruined the teaching moment, okay? And if you really don't want to do something, say it, right? Then just say it. Hey, where do you want to eat? What sounds good to you? A big greasy burger with fries. Okay, me too, let's go. You know, just be honest. I'm not perfect at this either, let's try. Because if we can begin to be committed and decisive on the little things, then more will be given. Let's pray for prudence, that we will know what ought to be done and ought to be, to be avoided, that we will grow in character, that we will be people of our word and commitment, a.k.a. faithful disciples of the Lord. Good luck. <laughs> I wish you all the blessings in the world as we try to be faithful like Jesus.